Hi, I'm Mrs. Bennett. Let's explore the Spike app a little further. This is the Spike app, version three. If you're using a laptop, the browser app looks the same, except for connecting to the hub. Use the link spike.legoeducation.com. Connect to the hub by opening the connections window via the blue button. Make sure the light on your hub is flashing white in order to connect. Select your hub name and click on pair. Select back to the project. If you're having trouble, your device's Bluetooth may need to be enabled by clicking on the arrow in the taskbar and selecting the Bluetooth icon. All LEGO lessons require us to use software to input data into a digital system. The Spike app is our software and the iPad is our digital system. We input data by dragging and dropping Spike block coding. The iPad system then processes the data and outputs the message wirelessly via Bluetooth to the microcomputer inside the small hub. The hub then processes the data and inputs the data into the motors or sensors. When creating a new project from scratch, Spike Essential features two simple programming languages, Icon and WordBlocks. I would recommend Icon Blocks for years K to two and word blocks for years three to six. These programming languages are also compatible with Spike Prime and Python, making it an easy progression when heading to high school. Be aware the Spike Essential units use either icon blocks or word blocks. This will dictate which lesson to choose. The scrollable palette on the side allows you to see all the block options. Notice the colored groups to indicate the different functions of computational thinking. Drag and drop blocks onto the programming area. You can pull blocks apart and delete blocks by dragging and dropping them back into the palette. Once you have chosen a block, have a go with changing the units of measurement. What changed? What did you notice? This pink block is used to move both motors either forward or back. How far does it move? In what angle does it turn? Change your units of measurement to design your solution. I wonder if you can turn your vehicle or robot 90 degrees. Does it make a difference to what type of surface you are on? See what happens if you change the front wheels from being fixed to enabling movement. Investigate the simple mechanics of a wheel and axle. Can you see the single motor on the blue motor blocks? You will need to program with this block when also plugging a sensor into Spike Essentials. The icon on this block means to move the motor clockwise. Some may confuse this with turning right. Play around with using the different motor speeds. Please note, unfortunately, you can't go forward and turn your robot or vehicle with only one motor. To run and test the program, press the yellow play button. You can press stop if your code is incorrect, then debug. Can you play around with loops to repeat steps multiple times? For example, to turn in a square? Loops are introduced in stage one. To learn about the motors and sensors, head to the start menu in the navigation bar and go through each tutorial. These tutorials will help you to add sensors to your builds. Quick note. In the top left corner, you can see which motors or sensors are plugged into the A or B ports. The light sensor can detect a certain color and then activate the motor. This, in coding language, is a condition. In stage one, you use one condition when programming. However, in stage two, you experiment with multiple conditions. What might you use the light blocks for? Maybe to program all nine pixels to red to mimic brake lights on the rear of your robot or vehicle. Check out this resource link to find out more. To add the extension word blocks, click on this icon located in the bottom left corner. In icon blocks, it is located in the bottom right corner. Viewing data and sensor readings allow you to gather relevant data, create displays and interpret them. Hot tip. Stage three learners can have a look at how to turn on the light sensor when the gyro sensor is tilted. 
The Crazy Carnival Games unit demonstrates how user input can gamify Spike Essentials covering stage three outcomes. Hopefully you have learned some practical tips when starting off in the Spike Essentials app. Don't forget to share any of your successes and questions with the STEM T4L Facebook and Yammer communities.